This is Brian Putt. Today I'd like to talk about the JCL graphic, which is the Joint Confidence Level Analysis Method. Uh, I looked on YouTube and couldn't find much, so I thought maybe I'd add a, a YouTube video about this. It's designed to help analyze cost and schedule risk analysis, and the typical graphic is shown here. But let's back up a little bit. The JCL practice, as published, is really not much different from what I would call the typical cost schedule risk analysis. You collect data, identify the workflows, generate some analysis, uh, kind of check it out, look at the health check on, on file, update the analysis with the schedule, apply uncertainties, and then run your model. And from that, you're going to get an uncertainty of both cost of schedule integrated into one analysis. The typical output is to show them separately. In other words, there's the distribution for the uh, schedule, shown here elapsed time, and then a distribution for the cost uncertainty. And as expected, in most cases, this baseline cost is always in the P5 to P10 range, sometimes even less is shown here in this cost. Okay. So if you want to learn more about those graphics, you can look at my YouTube channel, or more specifically, you can look for a cost of schedule risk analysis workshop and the cost and schedule risk discussion with systems engineers. Both of those uh, talk about generally the, the CSRA graphics I just showed you. Let's analyze the JCL graphic using Excel. OK, here's, here's a. Uh, CSRA model I put together using SIPMath. And, and here are the two graphics that I showed you previously on the PowerPoint. And what I'm suggesting here is that these are integrated. There's a burn rate. Uh, you can see the burn rate here. Burn costs are in blue. So here's the burn rate uh, uncertainty, which, which is related to the, the schedule uncertainty. So in this model, I've added a JCL chart. So if we take the results from our CSRA and look at them as a pairs of schedule and cost uncertainty, we can plot those. So we got schedule uncertainty here. This is uh, date completed versus the cost uncertainty. Also shown on this graphic is our deterministic estimate. So these uh, two, this data point corresponds to this dashboard and these two orange lines. Okay. So over here, we now want to understand what it looks like if we had a 50% confidence in both cost and schedule. Let me start by putting in the 50% over here. We're going to later on adjust these. Okay. And now I'm going to add in a line. Uh, vertically for schedule, where the 50% schedule is, and a, a line here for the 50% cost. We'll select on the graph, go to filters, and we'll get the schedule uncertainty and the cost uncertainty. We'll apply that. All right, so now what do we have here? We've now made a grid, four, four grids. And we can see that if we just count the dots in each of these grids, and that which is done over here, that 35.8% of the time we're down here in this lower quadrant, which is when we're below the P50 cost and below the P50 schedule. Over here, we're above over cost and behind schedule, taking us longer. That's 35.82 as well. And then 14.2 in either side. So the government would call this, uh, if you put in for 50% on both, a only having a 35.8% chance confidence that you're going to be both meet both schedule and cost. And if you were going to budget at this level, you would then budget between what 250 and this looks to be around uh, 310. So you'd budget a contingency of about 
sixty million dollars. I don't know if you really have contingencies on schedule, but you would then put in your plan this this schedule here for completing the project, and everyone would plan around that date. However, the boss may say, look, I need more than a 35% probability of, of achieving the, the goal. What if I was willing to increase my cost here, let's say to 80%. So now my black line moves up a bit, and my confidence level has increased now to 47.3. But now I'm still concerned about my confidence level. The government actually likes to have 70%, I believe. So what would it take to get the 70%? Well, it turns out if I increase this to 80%, I now have a 70% confidence that I will meet both cost and schedule. I have increased my, my contingency that I'm going to have to allow for from 250 to, let's call it 340. So I now have $90 million in contingency. Now we can do one more thing with this graphic. And that is, we can think about, is there more than one way of achieving a 70% confidence interval. So here I've hard-coded this 8080 and the, the date and the, the cost. And let me just expand this out a little bit here. And I've recorded some other options. So we could look at 7099. This also has a 70% confidence, but now I've really had to increase my, my cost. That may be more than I really want to commit to this project or budget. And so now I want to reduce that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my schedule to 90%. And then I can reduce this to 72. How does that work? So if I go with a 90% schedule, 90% chance I'm going to achieve my schedule, and a 72% chance of achieving my cost, I get to my 70% confidence interval. We can plot these points and see the alternatives for achieving our 70% confidence. It depends on how much schedule we're willing to give in order to reduce our costs. Truly at this point, to reduce the schedule beyond this, this time frame is going to cost us a lot more in contingency. So anyway, you might think about this graphic the next time you have to do a cost and schedule risk analysis to help explain some alternatives uh, to your management. Thank you for watching.